Okay, this is an annotated bibliography entry and it's uh, detailing Nielsen's 10 principles. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, in summary, it's uh, number one, speak the user's language. Number two, have consistency of standards. Number three, help, help your user. Number four, enable user control and freedom. Number five, uh, visibility of system status. Number six, flexibility and efficiency for frequent users. Number seven, error prevention. Number eight, recognition, not recall. Number nine, good error messages. And number ten, minimalist aesthetic. Um, and I am basing it uh, roughly um, on a lecture from MIT. Um, it's from uh, a graphical user interface design program from the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, it's the fall semester 2003 and it's the fifth lecture in this series. Um, user interface design and implementation is the program. And here is the, uh, the lecture itself. You can see the link there which I'll post. Um, and this actually goes through a variety of user interfaces, um, some Microsoft uh, interfaces, uh, some interfaces that doesn't detail where they're from, and it also deals with Google. And I thought that I would, um, yeah, that I would, uh, oh, multitasking, my man, not necessarily good at this. Um, yeah, I thought that I would uh, apply them to Google, but I would apply them from the perspective of a 71-year-old grandmother, um, as I will be teaching my mother to use the internet in about 10 days. And I thought that might be an interesting project. So, let's go back and let's take a look at the first one. So, speak the user's language. Uh, and the subsections of this, um, so... They talk about uh, not limiting your user's terms and allowing aliases or, or multiple terms for words. And in Google, that's really completely fine. You can search for whatever you like. It doesn't really care the, the word that you use. It will search for exactly or very close to exactly the word that you're looking for. Um, so there are issues there with not being able to search um, that easily for synonyms, but it's a really, really good um, search algorithm. You're going to find what you're looking for, um, and uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think we have to accept that it's pretty good on that basis. Um, so no limits in user terms, allowing aliases. Um, I do find myself thinking, does this interface speak the language of a 71-year-old grandmother with no internet knowledge um, and experience? And no, it doesn't. Uh, so the search box here, this is in its way a piece of language. It communicates something to you if you're using it. Um, and if you're a 23-year-old college student who's grown up with the internet, you know exactly what it's saying to you. Type here and hit return. Um, but if you're a 71-year-old grandmother, you haven't got a clue. Uh, you possibly or probably don't know where the Google search is and you definitely don't know what I'm feeling lucky is and uh, the buttons up here are uh, probably a complete mystery to you um, if you know what a search is if you've grown up with search if you know how it works if you know how it indexes and allows you to access the internet this is superb if you don't um, it's like landing in a foreign country where everybody else except you speaks the language. Um, so I think for a 71 grandmother, um, speak the user's language, that's a fail. Sorry, Google. Uh, number two is uh, consistency of standards. Okay, and uh, they talk about a couple of different things here. And I think Google score fairly well in this, in fact, really well in it. Uh, so they're talking about um, things that do similar things should look the same and things that do different things should look different. So we have our two search buttons here and they look the same. Same font, same button, same color fill, absolutely everything and they're in the same location and they're grouped together. Really, really good. Uh, buttons up here do something completely different and uh, but they look similar to one another. Um, they have a different function to the search buttons. Again, they're grouped together, the same font, they light up in the same way, they do pretty much the same thing. Uh, buttons down here, again, uh, they do something different, they're just ordinary links, and that's so consistent with standards. For a 71-year-old 71, 71 grandmother, it's going to be easy to see that these are related, these are related, and that these are related. Um, and with a little experience, it's going to be easy to see that they do the same thing. 
Um, so they talk about internal consistency and they also talk about external consistency. Um, so internal consistency is the buttons and the look and feel. Um, external consistency is, is it like um, other, um, other interfaces? Um, and uh, let's take a look at some other interfaces. So let's take a look at an old interface, uh, Metacrawler, uh, which was popular for a while as a search engine. Uh, let's see if it's still up and running. I hope it is. Um, so, uh, actually, Metacrawler has now changed. Uh, they've really simplified their search page, and in fact, they've emulated Google. Uh, it used to be completely filled with ads and completely filled with content left, right, and center. Um, and uh, Google was notable at the time for having a really minimalist, clean design, uncluttered. Um, even the inclusion of these buttons was uh, was a matter of controversy initially. Um, so sometimes internal, or sorry, sometimes cross-platform consistency is a really good thing, but there has to be a good reason for it. Um, if you can innovate and provide a better user interface, then you need to dump cross-platform cross consistency and go with your new interface. And Google is a total and absolute winner on this. Okay, uh, number three, uh, which is um, help. Um, Now, I do find myself wondering who Google are designing for. I'm guessing they're designing for people who already know their way around search engines uh, because um, it's very difficult to find help. Nothing tells you what it is. Um, there is no help button. Um, none of these tell you what they are. If you already know what all of these are, it's really fantastic and it's really explanatory and everything is grouped together and it's exactly how it should be. But if you don't, um, you're lost. Um, you, if you don't have the background of knowing how the internet works and how everything connects together, um, this is pretty terrible from a health perspective. Um, so uh, for I think they get a 71-year-old grandmother fail on that score. Okay, uh, user control. And freedom is number four. So let's put down as control and freedom. Yeah, I found this one a bit difficult. Um, in I guess in terms of if you make a mistake or if you make an error, so let's say that we're going for, I don't know, um, I'm looking for Planksy, um, and I spell it like that. So I made an error and I've made a mistake and Google auto corrects for me. So I don't really have the control um, but I don't really have to have the control because my spelling errors and my typos are probably taken care of and I can click here and go actually that's what I meant. Um, otherwise you're reliant on the back arrow which is a pretty good way of um, of going back if you make a mistake and you go back to where you need to go uh, and of course make a mistake and you can just retype um, you have really good control here I think um, you have a back button on your browser which again for a 71 year old grandmother isn't going to be fantastic um, but uh, it is clearly identified what it is and the search button is here anyway and also you have spelling suggestions here so I think it's scoring pretty well on that Okay, uh, let's take a look at number five, which is visibility of system status. And I think Google is probably a special case here. Um, and uh, part of why it's a special case is it's so incredibly fast um, that you don't really need a, um, a progress bar. I mean, let's take a look. Here's our search result. It happened in 0.33 seconds, which is pretty slow by Google standards. Pretty slow. Um, and uh, yeah, for that, you don't really need a progress bar. Um, you don't really need to tell the user what's happening. Um, and Google very rarely crashes. Um, so uh, it doesn't score at all well, really, on, um, on visibility of system status. But it doesn't have to. Um, it happens so fast that everything almost seems seamless. Um, typical search was also coming in at kind of 0.17 seconds. So I think we will give it a um, an NA, and not applicable on that. Doesn't really matter. 
number six, uh, flexibility and efficiency. Okay, we're going to step out of the boots of our 71-year-old grandmother um, because this is flexibility and efficiency for uh, frequent users, uh, which uh, my mother certainly isn't. Um, so let's take a, a step out. And uh, Google does provide, I don't. I never knew about them, but it does provide them, um, shortcuts. Uh, for example, let's take a look at er Erwin Schrodinger, S-C-H-R-O-D-I-N-G-E-R. And let's take a look at his date of death. And here we go. Bang, right there. Simple factual information. You can do this for simple factual information about when things happened and when people died. You can check the release dates for movies or the show times for video for movies around your area. There's a whole bunch of um, shortcuts that Google Search provides um, to make your life faster, easier, quicker and probably more trackable. Um, so yeah, I think we have to give it a, a good score on this. It does allow you to um, to take advantage uh, of frequency of use uh, in terms of shortcuts. Uh, seven is error prevention. And uh, yeah, I think we have to admit that Google are spectacularly good at uh, preventing errors. Uh, it's very rare uh, for the system to be down. It's very rare for search to be inaccessible, um, so I think we have to give it pretty much close to 100% on that. Um, eight is recognition, not recall. So uh, this means that the user interface itself um, lightens your cognitive load by mean by ensuring that you don't have to remember things; you just have to recognize them when you see them. And uh, Google is pretty excellent at this. I think my mother, once she begins to use the search, uh, that's not really going to be a problem. Each search page is basically exactly the same, with exactly the same information and exactly the same tools and exactly the same capabilities and possibilities. Uh, once you learn this interface, that's it. Uh, you never have to learn it again. You never have to learn anything new about it. It's completely instinctual. It stays with you. Um, it sticks in your brain until the day that you die. Um, it's a really good design from that perspective. Um, it's an incredibly powerful tool um, that's quite simple to use. And once you learn to use it, um, that's it. You never need to revisit the, uh, the learning um, process again. Uh, good error messages is number nine. Um, and it's been so long since I've seen a Google error message that I had to go look one up on Wikipedia. And um, they don't really have that many. Um, so the fact that they don't have that many um, probably puts them fairly close to full marks on this already. Um, let's take a look at one anyway. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, this is a Google server error. 502, that's an error. The server encountered a temporary error and could not complete your request. Please try again in 30 seconds. And that's all we know. So good errors um, avoid blame. Um, they avoid um, overly negative terminology like fail or quit. Um, they avoid accusing the user of doing something wrong. And they avoid codes. Here you have a code, um, but it's not that big a deal. It just says that's an error. The server encountered a temporary error and could not complete your request. We don't know what the temporary er error is. Please try again in 30 seconds. This is pretty good. Um, it gives me um, a path to um, uh, to solving it. And it doesn't require any further action, really, on my part about the error, apart from trying the search again in 30 seconds. So it's pretty good. Uh, 10 is um, an almost 100% score, which is minimal design. The less is more aesthetic. And Google, it has to be said, um, you know, less is more. It's famously minimalist. Famously minimalist. Um, I think initially for my mother, this minimalism is going to be a huge problem because there's very few cues and clues about what's happening. Um, stuff doesn't tell you what it is, how to use it. But once she gets used to it, this minimalism is going to be a real benefit. Um, it's there, it's easy to use, it's simple, it's clean, there's no clutter, there's nothing to confuse you, there's nothing additional. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's minimalist, and uh, once you learn how to use it, it's with you for life. So uh, overall, pretty good. 8 out of 10? Yeah, that's a good score.